think like a queen. A queen is not afraid to fail. Failure is another stepping stone to greatness. These are the words of Oprah Winfrey, American media mogul and philanthropist. <music>
My life, I think, you know, I'd, I'd go back to when I was in matric uh, several years ago. Um, so it was our final year, nearing the end of our year term, and we had to put together a yearbook, and each of the matriculants basically had to, you know, write down a thought or a philosophy, if you want to call it that, or whatever that they, they, they stand by. And for me, that was, don't compromise yourself, you're all you've got. Um, I think that's something that I still, you know, try to live by, um, even now. And what that means for me is just being true to yourself. And, you know, to understand that you can't be everything to everyone, and to know that that's okay. Um, I think what it has done for me, it has really shaped, you know, me taking charge of my life and making life happen instead of letting life happen to me. Um, yeah, I think I would say that would probably be my philosophy. Do you believe in inspiration? Definitely. Who inspires you? Sure, who inspires me? You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not actually inspired by one specific person. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that every person I meet and, enc and have an encounter with, you know, has something to offer. So I get inspired by different events or um, different achievements or different people um, that mean something at that specific season of my life. Are there a few you can mention that have inspired you? So if I was to name a few, definitely my mother, um, Michelle Obama, um, Futi Mahayele is definitely one of them, and of course Kanye Zomo, yeah. Hmm. You, you, what, what particularly about these people in, inspires you? Sure, the, um, they drive and their success and you know, they are the epitome of, of, you know, of grace, of, um, of just the achievement that they've had and the, the brand that they've managed to build um, within, you know, within the different industries and the different spheres that they're in. Um, and definitely my mother as well, because I believe I'm the person I am now today because of the person that she was to mm. me, yeah. Do you have a day that you, you dedicate to the most important thing of your life or do you have a day that you classify as the most important day in a calendar year, you know, sure. to your life? Would I be selfish if I said my birthday? No, it's <laughs> just entirely up to you. I think for me... With different, you know, importance is different yeah, to you yeah. know, all of us. So uh, for me, it's, it's, it's definitely my birthday. I mean, there are obviously certain days that, you know, um, that, that are significant or that have marked certain achievements in my life, but... I don't think any of those things would have happened if it was not for my birthday. Mm. So I think, you know, it's important, you know, like me asking you if it's selfish, I think we, in society, we're made to think that, you know, you can't celebrate yourself. Um, I think it's important to love yourself first and before anything else, um, to invest in yourself first so that you can, you know, be of something else to, to other people. Mm. So, yeah, I think definitely I'd say it's, it's my birthday. Your birthday. Yeah. And what role would you say your family um, all those around you have played yeah. in the woman, in shaping up the woman that you are today? Sure, uh, that's a very interesting question. Um, so, so growing up, I was raised by women. I was raised by very strong, very intelligent... Expand a little, what, what women, which women? So, yeah, so... So, I lost my father when I was very young, I was a few months old. And Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it happens. So I had a mother that had to be a mother and a father to me at the same time. Um, so in my upbringing, she had a very big influence in my life, um, including my grandmother and all my aunts. Um, I think what that has taught me is, you know, to take charge of my choices, to take charge of my destiny, um, to not wait for things to happen, but to make things happen. She's taught me to be strong, to be independent, most of all. Um, she's taught me the value of being, of humility, of being humble and valuing other people. And, you know, education was, was key. And, you know, it was, it's basically something that as I've always seen, that something that no one can ever take away from you. Um, and I think all of those things have contributed to the person that I am um, today. Hmm. Do you think it's, it's important to have um let's say, women or gender inclusiveness in uh, determining um, an industry, yeah. you know, leadership? Um, for me, it's definitely important, but for me, it, it goes beyond just having a woman in leadership. Um, I think what's important is... Sorry. 
sorry. Carry on. To um, me. For me, it, it goes beyond just having women in leadership. Um, I think what's important is having that there's diversity and that richness of, have, of being able to tap into various thoughts and various opinions. Um, I truly believe that women bring something different to the boardroom. Um, and it's not only, it's, it's a business imperative and it's, it's also, it, it mitigates business risk in that it avoids a bias in thought. And that is something that a diverse um, leadership structure will always bring to any organization. And, you know, I think in previous years, the um, talent has been limited and the, and, the, and the resources and the opportunities have been limited. But I think now that we're in a position where we've got all, all these people that are experienced, that have, um, you know, that have the drive and that can be leaders to positions, I think it's important that we make use of that um, to cultivate a culture of, of diversity and, you know, equal opportunity and, and, and just exchange of thoughts and opinions and ideas. Do you find time to read? I do. I, m yeah. I make time. I make time to read. Could you that's, share with us what you're, important. what you're reading at the moment? Um, what am I reading? So I'm actually reading two books currently. The first one is A Year of Yes, and that's by Shonda Rhimes. So basically she talks about her life story. She talks about um, you know how she grew up, how she had a passion for storytelling, and which led to her career in writing. And um, she talks about how you know, she's always immersed herself in her work and she's just always been comfortable with the norm and with you know, not moving away from her, her comfort zone. Um, and that has closed up so many opportunities for her because she never explored anything else. She never um, you know, take, took up any opportunities that came by until her sister you know, brought up that you, know, you never say yes to anything. And I think when that, as soon as that resonated with her, she made a conscious decision to yes, say yes to every opportunity that comes her way. And she talks about how that opened up so many doors for her. Um, and for me, what that, what that um, means is that, you know, how a mindset shift and how your attitude and just the energy that you exude is important in what you attract. So as soon as you make a conscious effort to open yourself up to new changes, to challenges and to opportunities, you know, you open yourself up to other opportunities um, beyond um, your expectations as well. Yeah. Um, the second book is called Equal But Different, and it's by Dr. Judy Lamini. So this, it's basically her doctoral thesis, and she talks about um, the impact that your race, your gender, your social class has on, you know, your progression in your career as a woman, specifically. And you know, she talks to different influential people in industries, different prominent people, and they talk, try to put together strategies in, you know, in the progressiveness of um, women empowerment and women uh, in leadership as well. So those are the two books that I'm reading currently. Very impressive. <laughs> the, if you've just joined us, welcome to Makamba Life. We're talking to a marketing strategist with one of the global uh, accounting firms, you know, VUE. What are you passionate about, VUE? Oh, what am I passionate about? Mm -hmm. I'm passionate about, you know, seeing women succeed and, you know, the empowerment of girls specifically through mentorship and education. Mm -hmm. What are your views on, on empowerment and, and, and mentorship yeah. as it relates to women? Mm. So, you know, currently I think about 100, current stats about 130 million girls uh, deny the basic right of education. 130 and million girls in Africa? In, in the world. In the world. Almost about 50% of those girls are in Africa. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I, I think we need to make more of a conscious effort in you know, creating empowerment and mentorship um, opportunities um, for, 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 for girls in particular. Um, and I think if with mentorship, I think we, t we take for granted the value of you know, associating um, with like-minded people and building networks. We, we tend to get stuck in our own world and in our own bubble. And we tend to only you know, interact with people that, you know, with our colleagues, with our family, with our friends. But we need to broaden our networks and broaden you know, our areas of expertise and learn from each other and, and exchange knowledge. Um, I think mentorship uh, would definitely go a long way in business as well as mentorship um, from the top down. Um, we, you know, I think every person, especially you know, people in, in, in different industries have something to impart to young girls 
there's, there will always be something that someone else sees in you that they don't see in themselves. So I think we all need to take an opportunity to play a role and to do something to change um, a girl's life and to also within our networks as well to just interact and to build um, each other up as well. Mm. Juvi uh, juvenile delinquency yeah. is becoming uh, quite a challenge in South Africa and most uh, African yes. countries. Yeah, definitely. You know, what, what, would you, what advice would you give or what would you encourage society yeah. and, and governments to do to fight this uh, scourge? Yeah, um, you're right. I think it's, it's definitely become so prevalent um, in recent um, years. Um, I think over and above, you know, with the measures that have already been implemented, I think it's important to place a, a focus on, you know, sharing information with, um, with, with, with these children and with their families as well. Um, I think education is key, and not only education of the kids, but education of the parents in terms of how to raise mentally fit and physically fit children, especially in, in disadvantaged communities. Um, I think it's important, you know, for children to understand that their actions have consequences. Um, you know, there's, there's just a culture of entitlement that, um, especially within the younger generation, and it's almost like they don't realize, you know, the long term or the longevity of their actions as well. So it's important that they, they understand that. And I think as, as parents as well, we need to, you know, take more accountability um, in raising our children. You know, we tend to, to think, you know, once a child has gone to school, it's the, it's the school's responsibility mm -hmm. to, to take control of the, of the kids. But we need to have open and honest conversations with our children um, and to understand the times that we're in and to understand that, you know, we're no longer in a time where children are seen and not heard. Um, and to understand that children have a lot of information at their disposal currently. And you as a parent should be the first point of contact. You should be the first reference point. Wherever there's something that they don't understand, they should always come to you instead of seeking you know, advice and to please other people as well. So I think it's important that you know, we get to understand and, and, and just have a, a, an open relationship with our children, which is di very different from um, how a lot of us um, grew up. Do you practice uh, philanthropy? Um, I do. Do you? I do. Any, any charitable organizations that you support? So, um, I think, you know, we all are philanthropists in our own right. Mm. Um, you know, first, just to answer your question, I think a lot of people tend to shy away from being philanthropists because they always think you have to do something big to make a difference. Um, but I think it's important to just urge people to do whatever small thing that they can in their all in the small fears of, fears of influence. Um, so, for me, I'm involved in a lot of... Um, women's associations and uh, youth leadership and mentorship programs. Um, I do a lot of um, work with my church as well. There's a lot of different charities that um, we reach out to and you know we, we spend time with as well. Um, so I think it's important that no matter how small we all need to, whether it, and it doesn't always have to be about money, we, you can you know give your time <coughs> You can, you know, just take time and spend time with the with the child that is in need of whatever skill that you have. So definitely, philanthropy is something that um, is, is 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 very big for me. Um, maybe in future, I join the Obama Foundation as well. <laughs> <laughs> Obama Foundation. Obama Foundation. <laughs> Inspired by Barack and Michelle Obama. Yes. <laughs> is it true in the corporate world <clears throat> uh, what is said that, um, uh, regardless of qualifications? A woman has to try three times harder yes. yeah. to be at power with men, mm -hmm. and blacks equally have to try, you know, two, three times harder yeah. to be at power with yeah. uh, the white races. Mm. Yeah. Is this something that you have experienced, that's, or that's some of your buddies have experienced? Yeah. Um, that's, I'm, I've got, I actually have a threefold. Uh, so I'm, I'm black, I'm a woman, and I'm young. Um, so I think those are three things that you know will always work or are currently working um, to our disadvantage. Um, but I think, you know, especially in the corporate world, your work will always speak volumes. Um, you sometimes you, you you don't really need to, you know, be the loudest voice in the room. Um, but people will judge you by your your actions, and they will judge you by the output that you have. Um, yes, as women, we, we always have to be 
more conscious of so many things. Um, you know, the, apart from the fact that we are in corporate and we are in business with men, we're also running households as well. So there's a lot to juggle and I think you, you need to have that skill and you need to have that drive and to be able to prioritize and know what it is that you want um, from your career. And I think also mentorship is also very important, um, as I already stated. Yes. As, even within your corporate, um, your, your corporate structure, because sometimes you don't even need to be a room, but if you've got that one person that can speak on your behalf to the right people, um, that is so important, can do wonders for, 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 for your career and for your growth um, at the, the corporate leader as well. Terrific. So I, I, as much as it's a disadvantage, I don't think it's something that should hold us back. Um, we've got a lot of women bring something that men will never bring. So we need to be able to tap into that and to use that to our advantage. What would you do if uh, you became the first woman president of South Africa? Sure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, a press conference. What, yeah. you know, what announcements you know, would you make first? So what I, I promulgations uh, would you bring about? So I think, uh, you know, touching back to what we, we've been talking about now, um, I, I, I feel like South Africa is not a very friendly place for women. Um, if you look at the high rates of sexual violence, of um, domestic violence, um, the, I, women, there are more women that are unemployed than men. The, you know, the remuneration um, structures that are not the same. So there's a lot of um, gaps uh, in terms of inequality in the social sphere, in, in business, in corporate, in, in our leadership levels, it's right, right um, throughout. So I think as a, as a woman president, I would bring more focus on, you know, the gender-based um, issues that, um, that the country is facing. And, you know, where it's not only about talking about it uh, or holding seminars or holding conferences or creating hashtags about it, but where there's real action that's taken to close that gender parity gap. Um, and I think also I'd bring leadership that is characterized by integrity, uh, which is you know, something that I, you know, I, I stand for as well. Is there something that you were hoping I would ask you that I haven't asked? Sure. You can, you can look into the camera and leave wow. your final word with our viewers. <laughs> it's all yours. <laughs> sure. Um, I think actually we, we've really spoken about you know, re who I am. Um, I, appreciate, I appreciate the opportunity that you've given me. Um, and you know, just allowing me to share my views and to share my thoughts. And I just want to tell, especially women out there, that you know, you don't really, you don't have to do much to, to make a difference. Um, I, and and to, to, to just let women know that the world is their oyster. I think we're in, in, in great times right now in our country specifically, where you basically, you can do whatever you want, you can be whatever you want. Um, and you know, I would urge everyone that is out there to just, you know, choose even three little girls or young girls that they can, you know, mentor and that they can just take um, under their wing. Um, I think there's a really a great need for that. And from my interactions that I've had with little kids or with the little girls, they, they've got a hunger for, for just someone to look up to. So I think I would really urge everyone that is watching us now to just make a conscious effort to make a difference in someone's life. There you are, as we say on Makamba Life, hashtag resilience, <laughs> no stopping us now. Viwe Batrela. Yes. All right. Thank you very much for coming. You've been extremely kind. Hope to see you again soon on Makamba Life. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Wish you luck. <laughs>